happy Wednesday. Um, as you can see by the title of this video, I thought I would take you along for a day in the life today. So I woke up this morning around 6.12, got ready, and I'm already here at 7.15. So within an hour, I woke up, got ready, um, grabbed myself some Starbucks, packed a lunch, although you saw I was just left over Chipotle because um, lazy, lazy day today. But um, I'm already here. I've got some things to do. Yesterday was actually, we had a day off because it was um, voting day. And they use our school as a voting site. So because it was Super Tuesday um, and it's presidential primary, uh, when it's like a really busy election, they just close the school because there's so many people in and out for, you know, safety purposes, which I think is a good call. So a Tuesday off, that is wonderful. Um, now I'm coming in here on Wednesday. So I'm going to look over the slides. I'm going to look over the plans, see what I've got to do. Um, I did bring two things to school that I packed in my bag. I got more of these bumpy boards. Um, I used these during our three part drill and I did have one for each student, but actually on Monday I got a new student and somebody along the way had already lost theirs. So we were already one short. Now we're two short and realistically we could use some new ones. So this is just like a plastic mesh screen that I think people use for um, crocheting, quilting, something like that. Uh, and then you can just cut it up into pieces for students to uh, put a paper on, to write over it, to practice letter formation. Um, so I love it and just ordered another set of those. I'll link it down in the description in case you wanna see what it's all about. And then I also got another of the mini pocket charts. I shared in last week's video, my new literacy centers. And one of them is find the fish with the mini pocket chart. They could just play it on the ground, but I find that the cards hold up better and it's like nicer to have it just on a stand. So I got another set of these um, or another one of these to use during that time. All right, now I'm going to make some copies because since I knew I had Tuesday off, I only really prepped for Monday and then I figured I would do the rest today. So let's go make some copies and then I'll tell you what we are up to for the day. All right, let's get everything ready for the day. No longer Monday. And good news for you, I know people have been asking forever um, about the this little calendar thing that I have here. I just obviously printed them out and laminated each of these and I store them here. Um, and I had mentioned to many people in the comments that I forgot to save it. I kind of just worked over it because um, it was something I just printed out for my own class and wasn't thinking ahead. But I was able to remake this entire file um, and so I actually put it down below in my description in case you want this for your own board. I did print these out that I'm gonna laminate. Um, these are my phoneme grapheme mapping mats. We've been using them a lot in my small group for, um, we're pretty much past CVC words, but beginning blends and digraphs, we've been using them a lot, um, but I hadn't yet printed out and laminated the boards for silent E. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that this morning. Um, and then it always comes with a word list of words to give students. And then I also have it where they have pictures so they can just say gate. Then they'll move a cube for each one, g, a, t, and then they'll go ahead and write it down here. So this has been working really well for those other skills and I need to move up the progression. And then just to show you my literacy centers this week, I've got a new set of words for find the fish. This is the same type of activity I did last week, but it's a new set. Um, this is the mix and match there. So they have to actually read the word or say the word aloud, and then they have to unscramble all these letters, put them in the correct spot, and write it. Um, I don't know if these are on TPT yet. If they are, I will link them down below, but they are in the Literacy Club. And then my task cards, we are sticking with the silent E ones this week. So these are the same five that were here last week with everything they need for it. And then my last center I showed you last week is behind here. Um, of course, I turned this around. Let me recycle this but I turned this around so it's on the rug and these are some of the words they are going to roll and read and take. I tried to d introduce a lot more this week that had digraphs or blends in it um, since it's week two with this skill. All right, let's go through the slides and see what we are up to today. We have got good morning. Our lunch choices today are cheeseburger and not a nut butter sandwich. Morning meeting. Um, for our morning message today, we're going to just review putting numbers in order from least to greatest using place value. 
It is Would You Rather Wednesday, so we have two questions. Would you rather own a pet duck or a pet parrot? And would you rather have soup or salad for dinner? I have to explain why. We have our calendar, which I moved to the morning. Um, I did that a few weeks ago when I talked about my math block. Hegarty, phonics. Uh, for phonics, we are reviewing these silent E long vowel sounds. So we kind of just go over all the different sounds. I have somebody come up with, oh, where's the pointer? It's not there. But with one of the pointers and they just point to what sound and they have to try to make it as fast as they can. And then we, of course, go ahead and blend some sounds to make words and we talk about what it is tune, lime, and swipe. Uh, and then we have some heart words that we're going over. Friend, other, another, none, nothing. And then we're gonna do some building with our magnet tiles. We have not done building with our magnet tiles yet when we've introduced silent E. So we're gonna do some word chains there. Um, and then if we have time, we will do our read in color for decoding game with a friend. Snack and recess. Um, and then we're going to talk about, we've been talking about procedural writing and we have not yet come up with a definition. We've talked about what are the parts we see in it. So I have a bunch of how-to books over here. Um, we've read all of them so far, except How to Be a Cat by Nikki McClure. Um, and we've noticed that many of them are different. Like the How to Catch a Dinosaur one we talked about was purely fiction. We read it. It didn't really give us, um, it didn't give us a materials list. It, it differed a lot from these other ones that we've read so far. And then we have been doing, I think I showed you last week, we did some pigeon books that we made based on the Elephant and Piggy and Mo and You book by Mo Willems. So we're going to read that again today and we're going to make an Elephant and Piggy book throughout the week because they just had so much fun with it and it really shows us how to do it. We walk through the steps. So it was a really fun one. Then we have our reading centers. These are the ones I introduced last week where we have Find the Fish, the Roll It, Say It, Keep It, my task cards, and some sort of activity. I took all the names off because again, it's so much blurring here. And then I'm meeting with a group here. Um, we have still loved these. We're on week two. I'm very much enjoying it. So I already mentioned this last time when I was going over the centers, but I basically have the same exact slide here for two 10 minute sections. And the 10 minute timer just keeps me on track with my groups because I see two groups. One for 10 minutes, then we switch, and the other for 10 minutes. So there's only one group that is flip-flopping per day, um, and it's just the group that I'm seeing. So whatever group is here for the first 10 minutes, the other group will, let's say, be here um, that I'm going to see. And then when the timer goes off, these two just switch. Everybody else is doing this activity for the full 10 minutes um, or until they're finished and then they go to Seesaw and then Epic. So they are not rotating throughout the day, they're rotating each day. So like I said, they'll do Find the Fish on Monday, then the next day the group will go down and do Roll, Read It, Keep It, then Task Cards, then the independent activity. So it really makes it manageable because we're not rotating. I hope that makes sense. And then for the Seesaw activity, it's just one of my read in matches where they have to decode the word and drag over the correct picture. There's two pages in that Seesaw activity. All right, after literacy centers, we are on to win. So win is the same way it has been basically for a long time now. Um, we have an independent review station that they'll do. Again, they do one of these each day. So they'll be set somewhere and then they kind of move spots. So independent review is always in the top blue bin. We are working on silent E words and then place value within 40. For independent writing, I assigned this video, How a Caterpillar Becomes a Butterfly. I assigned that in Seesaw. They will watch the video and they have to share two butterfly facts. That page is right here in writing. Sometimes they write in their journal. It kind of depends on what the prompt is. But for this one, I wanted them to have a word bank. So it's down there. For math, they're playing one of my print and play time games for first grade. Um, we've been kind of just reviewing time because that's a short unit. So for this one, they have to read a digital time and then they have to actually create it on their clocks. And then the first one to fill up their clocks is the winner. That of course is down in the math bin. Try to make it as easy as possible. And then we always have collaborative reading. So this time is a time for them to buddy read and do some independent reading. They often come over into the corner. Um, they do have to read something together from their fluency folder, but then if they want to independently read just next to each other, they can do that over here with their book bins. And of course, during this time is when I'm meeting with groups. Um, names are obviously blocked out, but again, similar to the literacy centers, they only have one per day. So when this group is finished with their independent work, they can go to Epic that day. And then the next day, boom, they'll be moved over here. They can do the independent writing. And when they're done, they'll go to Raz Kids. So they always know kind of what they're doing next. 
then lunch and recess. And then for math, this is a fun kind of math talk we've been doing, it's called I Spy. I will put numbers over here that this boy is thinking of, and then we have to find a number in the grid that is either 10 more or 10 less. So we've been working on adding and subtracting tens from a number. Um, so they have to, again, find one of these, and then they have to either subtract or add 10 and then find it up here on the grid. So they'll come up, I give them the highlighter tool, they'll circle it and they'll say 25 minus 10 is 15 and color it in. So we just have one quick math talk today because we have stations again for math. Um, I shouldn't say again, but I told you this before when I like to spiral my review. I like to have at least one day, sometimes once a week, sometimes it happens where it's like once every other week, but just a review day where I kind of get my hands on everybody um, and see how they're doing with the skills. So this group over here is going to be playing a 10 more, 10 less game cover up. This is a game we played last week. It's from my place value pack, very similar to the warm up that I just did. I have a math interventionist here. Um, her name is blocked out here, but this is going to be her group. So she will work on, depending on the group that comes to her, I grouped them uh, homogeneously based on skill. So depending on the group, she will do something with them. We have an independent station for IXL, and then I'm going to work on the skill we've been currently working on, which is place value within 40, um, identifying tens and ones, comparing numbers, and ordering numbers. So I'm going to use the math and focus actual pages to do with them, just so I can, again, get my eyes on everybody in the class and kind of check in and see how they're doing. So there are four slides of that. Um, because we have the math interventionist in here, I can actually have four rotations, which is great. So that's why there's only one warm up because we're just gonna kind of quickly go into that. Um, our special is music. And then I have a meeting this afternoon, just a quick little consult meeting. So during writing time, we'll still do one of our warm ups. We're still doing these opinion writing warm ups. And then I actually am having my students make this. I believe it was a freebie from somewhere on TPT. Um, I'll try to find it and link it down below. But our snowmen, now that it is March, it's time for them to go. So I'm gonna have my aide do this with the class. Um, they'll pick any sort of number, identify the tens and ones, make their little rainbow and show it with base 10 blocks. And then it'll go up here to kind of springify our classroom. And then we're finishing up in social studies, learning about our spot in the world. Um, this is from Karen Jones Social Studies Unit. And we are, we identified like how we live on the earth and then there's seven continents and we go into our country um, all the way down to our address. So that is what our lesson is for social studies. And then it'll be the end of the day. So that is kind of what we are planning for today. Obviously I do not film during the day. So what I will do is after school, I will kind of pop in, let you know how everything went. I'll show you the crafts if they're updated. I'll let you know if we switched anything up um, and all that, but that'll kind of be the progression of the day for today for this random Wednesday. Um, and then, yeah, I will pop in after school and let you know how it went. See you in a bit. Hello, full disclosure. It is already like five o'clock. I am clearly at home. Um, I was going to pop in after school, but at the end of the school day, um, I had to get a million kids different places, had to get my own kids home. And so here I am. So I thought I would pop in here and give you a little rundown of how the day went. But mostly we did everything that was on the slides in the exact way that we did it. So I'll show a couple like little pictures that we took throughout the day. Um, we did phonics normally like we normally do. We didn't get to our reading color game, so I'm going to push that to tomorrow. And then let me think in reading, we did our elephant and piggy books. Here's a couple examples um, of the front cover. So each day we kind of do a little page. That's how we did the pigeon one. And it was really cute and fun to kind of follow through uh, follow the steps and understand the steps of procedural writing and how it really teaches us to do something. And then of course we did our literacy centers, which were just as usual along with Win, which was just as usual, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. We came back and did writing. The writing warm up. I showed you that little I spy one. Here's a couple students doing it. Um, it was so much fun. They really get the hang of it now and they're able to come up and say like 10 minus 10 equals zero and go ahead and circle it. But they've been having a fun time trying to figure out and like I spy. They kind of have to like solve the problem first before they figure out what is in the grid and which one they want to share with us. So that has been good. Rotations was fun. Um, I'll show you some of the place value centers that we did. Um, actually, let me show you some of those now. So over here at the back table is where 
um, our math interventionist worked with students. So I told you one group, she went ahead and did um, kind of what they needed at their level. And then for the two middle groups, we played mix, order, make. Um, and we had already done this last week, but essentially in here, if I can get them out, there are a bunch of cards kind of between, they're all two digit numbers between the numbers, you know, 10 and uh, maybe like 60. And it's not all the cards, they're just kind of random. So they'll pick three, they can mix it, they flip it over, 59, 24, and 51. And then they have to put them in order from least to greatest. So 24, 51, and 59. And then they have to actually make the number down here on the whiteboard to show that they can see how many tens and how many ones there are. And this was good because if they were having trouble, she could quickly intervene. And if they couldn't do the representation part of drawing the tens and ones, she could show them what it would look like with actual base 10 blocks. So two groups played this. And then of course, when they're done, they go ahead and put this away, flip three new cards and just continue mixing, ordering and making. Then my highest group over here did a lot of place value work in the same type of stuff we've been doing, except with our unit in Math and Focus, it only really goes up to 40, um, although I definitely extended it to about 60 for just comparing and ordering numbers just to push them a little bit. Um, but it only goes to 40 because then we're going to start addition and subtraction within 40. So what I had them do is some place value work with identifying, comparing, ordering, but with numbers to 120. So some of the task cards we have are, um, oh, why is that one empty? Just, they're all in here on accident. Um, building and adding. So for this one, it is, you know, build 65, add 10. Um, and this group, they did not have to build it if they knew how to do it. But again, she was here to kind of watch if they already knew this was 75 and could write it. I wouldn't have them build it just yet, but if they needed that help, then, you know, she could go ahead and show them how to do that. Let me move these over here. And then we have the subtraction ones. Same thing, 98 minus 10. Um, and these are all plus or minus 10s or 1s. So both build and add, build and subtract. This one is build and compare. So they're just comparing the numbers. This one is read and color. So they have a card here that has a 100s block on it. And if they see 43, they have to use their uh, dry erase marker and color in 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43. So they have to kind of color in and show what it looks like in relation to a hundreds block. This one is more basic count and clip. So they have to count up the tens and ones, clip the correct number and similar, but here they have to count and actually write it themselves. So count up the base 10 blocks and then how many tens, how many ones. After our math rotations, which move really quickly, um, sometimes I don't know if it's the best. Sometimes I feel like by the time they get there, you know, eight minutes at one time, and I do give them a minute, you know, to get to their next station. But by the time a game gets going, they can only practice it a few times. So I'm still kind of working on that, but it is the best way for me to see um, students. Like I thoroughly enjoy having them back at that table with me. Uh, so I really like that time and eight minutes is plenty of time. I mean, it's not, I could spend way more, but it's enough time for me to figure out uh, who has a handle on the skills, who needs to work on what skills, take a couple notes. So that part's fine. It's more, I kind of want to think about the activities that they are doing just to make sure that, you know, time's not wasted, I guess. I don't know. Still thinking about it, but then let's see, they went to specials. And then we came back and we did, um, I had my meeting in the afternoon. So while I was gone, my aide started the crafts that we finished. You can see them all hanging up and looking cute. Um, when I came back, we basically only had like 10 or 15 minutes left in the rest of the day. So I just helped out and finished those up with some of my students. And then we hung them up and got ready to go. As for life um, after school, I got home around 3.45. Love is blind. The season finale came out today. Um, my back has kind of been acting up again. I have not started PT yet. It is on the calendar though. So my husband and I lay down in bed upstairs. I put an ice on, pack on my back and we watched the finale of Love is Blind. So that's how we got to where we are now. And then we did order um, Five Guys. We ordered Five Guys for dinner because I was laying down and I see my back and it's a Wednesday and I was feeling lazy. So we ordered Five Guys and had that for dinner. And it's now getting time where I have to get Theo ready for basketball because he has his winter jamboree tonight. So all the teams will kind of 
play against each other. I think, I don't know if they get like trophies or medals or they might get some, some sort of swag for completing their season, but that's where we are now. Parker and uh, my other son, Calvin, are going to stay home. They are going to get ready for bed and go to bed on the earlier side because we don't get home till like 8.30. But yeah, that is a day in the life. If I have any clips of basketball, I'll insert them after this. But as always, I hope you enjoyed these videos and find them helpful. If you do, please give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of all new videos. Oh, also, my husband got a new toy, which means my boys have a new toy. Let me show you.